Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the future is here. The future is already here, but has not been widely distributed. It means that people live in the future somewhere. We can go and visit these people. We can talk to them. And we can bring bits and pieces from the future back into our normal lives and try to work with them. My quest is to find truly original management and leadership styles that will help companies make creative, collaborative, enriching organizations in the future. And when I started this quest, people said, well, Thomas, you have to go to institutions for higher learning, higher education. I didn't. Where I went, I went low. I went to the street wisdom. I went to the most unlikely place, the most on, I spoke to the most unlikely people for business advice. I went to the music we love, to the music we know so well. I went to the world of rock and roll. <laughs> I'm proud to present Jamie, Klaus, Mike, Troy, Henning. They are white lion. They were very, very big in the 80s. Uh, they sold 14 million albums. 20 bucks a piece. That's revenues for half a billion dollars. Half a billion dollars. And these people have no education. No skills whatsoever, beside one thing, they had a dream, they had a commitment, and they had a drive. These people is what Mr. Lohan, uh, my, uh, Cohen talks about, they are beautiful losers in society. They went through schools as outcasts, and they were all, I mean, every, I mean when, they, when they went to school, everybody said, well, you, I mean, you're not going to amount to anything. And these characters, let's... Take Henning here. <laughs> Henning is from Germany. He's the keyboard player. Just to give you an idea, I mean, can, uh, I mean to be honest with you, uh, Henning doesn't really play a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in fact, on the last album, it was the bass player who did all the keys. <laughs> but Henning does something else. He's German, so he's very good with his hair, like standing like this, uh, like that. And, and he's the only keyboard player. Look, look at the keyboard. He turned it up. So he'd go like this. Uh, great performance, stage performance. And also he's the only one who has a spotlight right in front of him. So even when the scene go dark, there's still Henning. <laughs> Henning also is very good at, at meet and greets with the fans. He likes to chat up the ladies. Uh, and, and he's also, being German, extremely good at booking tickets. He goes on Google, not on the first page, and says, oh, we'll take that uh, airplane ticket, uh, that ticket. He goes to Google page 18. This is the cheapest. <laughs> but I mean, and, I, and, and if you look at Henning as saying, well, we're going to judge him, we're going to measure him on how good he is playing the keyboard, you're missing the point. And I bet you a a anything this different Hennings going around in your organizations, doing a lot of the stuff, carrying the culture, carrying the spirits. We don't see them, but they're there. What happened was, in my quest, I wanted to dissect the idea of a rock band. Being a scientist, I wanted to dissect it. So I, dis I dissected Wide Lion. See, what, are, what, is, what is it that drives them? What are some of the fundamental ideas driving a rock band to, to, to stand together for a long time and be very, very successful? And what I found was when, when I dissected Wide Lion, I hooked up with Motley Crue. And the rules that I found in Wide Lion applied also for Motley Crue. And they applied for Metallica, Rolling Stones, Janis Joplin, Guns N' Roses. So what I kind of tapped into was the 
soul, and spirit of rock and roll. And rock bands were the mere manifestation, physical manifestation of a rock culture. So, well, being a scientist, I like to dissect things. So, oh, what is happening here? Really, we start again. Thank you, Jan Robert. And right now, this is beautiful. In rock music, this is a moment when people come alive. Thank you. <laughs> people, people show themselves by when, when, when we are failing, and we laugh. Brilliant. Okay, let's go to here. So, basically, these are the ideas. These are very strong sentences that carries rock culture. The first one is, rock and roll is not a fashion, it's a way of life. I said, well, this is very simple. But try to say, okay, it's not about wearing a leather suit, playing guitar. You also rock and roll when you're changing a diaper, when you're doing your laundry. Try to change rock and roll, say, let's say, father. Fatherhood is not a fashion, it's a way of life. Motherhood is not a role to be played, it's a way of life. To be a researcher is not a role, it's a way of life. So right there, rock and roll doesn't want to reduce what you do to some technical role you have to play. People come in, in full packages, and it's a life you live. So in that sense, when we're talking about work, being a manager, management is not a set of tools you need to require. It's a way of life. It's about maturing humanity. It's about being a good human being. One of the things is, when, when you, find, you find your guns, or your calling, or what you're all about, and that is perhaps one of the most dramatic, radical thing is, if this is true, if we should follow our heart, follow, follow our calling in life, as rock and rollers do, many of us should probably do something differently. So that itself has a profound impact. But what it also states is, when you found your calling, it's not a religious one, but it's an, an inner one, an inner calling, one of the golden rules of rock and roll is stick to your guns. Janis Joplin said it very, very clear. Don't compromise yourself. You all you got. You all you got. So stick to your guns, apply it into businesses. How do we, how do we insist on our purpose as a company when the customer is always right? Right now, we do a lot of marketing analysis. We ask the market. In rock and roll, you have to understand the audience are following Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan is not following the audiences. So that means the corporations need, uh, and, and management needs to stand for something. And if you start speculating about, this is kind of lucrative, that thing over there. In music, you sell out. You lose integrity. In music won't be worth listening to. So sticking to your guns is what makes music worth listening to. The next one is, that's, this is profound, is when you talk about rock bands, when you see the show, there's fire, there's light, there's smoke, there's a lot of movement. But actually, they play only 80%. They restrain energy. For in order for a community to work, you, 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 you need to restrain yourself. You think that we release a lot of things. They don't. Because you, if you release 100%, play 100%, sorry to say, you fuck the organization up. There comes a lot of constraints. The music will fall apart. And so the main thing, so the worst thing that can happen is they invite a guest in with the drums, a young guy who really smashes the drums. It ruins the music. So in that sense, it's very, very much, it's, it's um, uh, challenges the idea that we need to be 100% present in our work all the time, right? Give 100%, 110%. In rock and roll, they'll say, no, please calm a little down. You always have to play with spare capacity. So you can improvise. And you can always, when you play 80% on your instrument, 
you have 20% to create a presence, 20% to see how is my colleagues doing. In that sense, you create a collaborative performance that work. The next thing is only three takes in the studio. Only three takes in the studio is, is a golden rule in rock and roll. When you hit a recording studio and, and you're going to put down a track, it is either you make it or you break it. That's how it is. But the golden rules is, as, 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 uh, as an artist, is you have three takes where you listen to the material, and you listen, you suck, you suck it in, you, you get your inspirations, and you start playing. You become one with the material, and you only have three takes to get this going. If you don't got it, if you don't have it within three takes, then you're looking for something that just isn't there as an artist. The magic is gone. Put it down. Throw it out. And that is, a, when we talk about our, our organizations, when we initiate projects, we like to do it over and over and over and over and over again. That, that, so rock and roll's message to organization is you have to find some disruptive um, uh, ways of doing things. And one of the things is do it quickly. And you, you know all this. You know, sometimes when you're going to do something, you, you write it fast and blah, blah, blah. It's there. Every time you go back to it, it becomes dull. It becomes boring as fuck. So the idea is also, is also from, from architecture, keep sketching. Then it becomes fresh. It's still fresh. Okay, the next one is embrace your failures. Okay, I have a question for you. How much original art is made by truly very happy people? <laughs> Bono said, well, well, he quoted a French philosopher called Pascal. He said, well, I mean, people think that I, I, I made you too to save the world. I made you two to save, my, save, save myself. See, artist is having a God-shaped hole where all our failures, all our miseries are put in. You got it too, you got it too, you got it too. Artist use that as raw material for what they produce. So artists have a big access to this. So in that sense, artists embrace their failures, because it can, or it can create original art, original ideas. That's why we don't talk about rock and roll. We talk about rock and roll! <laughs> you need to get, get your cojones, also if you're a woman, and say it has to mean something. The next thing is keep it open. And keep it open is, thank you, is uh, very much the idea that uh, in order for things where people can collaborate, you need to keep the work you do open for people. I mean, in, in music, it is, if you make, make, make a track, keep it open so people can play and contribute and do something. And so therefore, rock bands are very, very, uh, is not very focused on the result in the beginning when you know the, the least thing about the number. You, of course, you have to have the end in view, but on the process that people can actually play. So in rock and roll, we don't, you don't tell people you have to play so-and-so. Keep it open so you can do your own thing, so you can add it in. The next thing is hooking up. Hooking up means it's nothing to do with hookers. Hooking up means how do you create a positive connection? Especially if, for instance, with the vocalists. Some of the vocalists can be very, oh, this is a very beautiful moment. Stop the tour bus. I want to enjoy the desert. And people say, well, we have a concert. Well, they're pain in the ass sometimes. But rock bands know. If the singer is not in his right element tonight, putting beautiful words, having interaction with audiences, the band will not work. So in bands, everybody is very, very focused on how do we create, how do we, how do we create a situation where people uh, function very, very well. And this idea is that people can do a shitty, a good, or an excellent performance the difference is not the person itself, it's often the situation you put the, the, per, the, the person in. So in rock bands, you try to create the right elements for people to excel. The next one is united, we stand, divided, we fall. And that is, 
rock bands are not colleagues. They are not team members. They are brothers and sisters. They have committed to a dream. They have committed to a way of life. It creates an extremely tolerance for, for being dysfunctional. Some of them are. But he also reinstalls solidarity again in the company as the basic fundamental idea we are here together. So how do we apply all these uh, um, uh, ideas into action? Well, I was really, I mean, I didn't know how to do it. Uh, but then I spoke to Edgar Schein, the father of organizational psychology, and, he, and in our conversation he said, well, Thomas, I think we need to suspend the social order in business, just for a while. Suspend the value system, suspend, not bypass. They still need to cut connection to their social order. So what we did is we got this idea with a company that was really, really, really uh, almost closed in the pharmaceutical com company, a department called 193 in Novo Nordisk, was um, let's close down the factory for two days. One of the days, every empl employee, management, blue-collar workers, mix them together, make rock bands, and all of them has to deliver a festival concert during the night. Band stories, create a band stories, create um, costumes, and play songs. And how do you play songs when people previously have, have no musical skills? MTV Games made uh, a rock band simulator. So we, we got that in, and this is a uh, pharmaceutical research company, Department 193. What you saw was PhD in biotechnology. It was people, research is sorry to say dry as fuck when you go in there. But what happened with Novo Nordisk was they were the best, no, the, 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 the worst ranking department. Red numbers on revenue, on employee satisfaction. After this, and it, it's, their, it's, I mean, it's their success, they were ranked best performing department in pharmaceutical two years in a row. Uh, so I have one word for you. I mean, don't, I mean, this is not for you to, I don't want you to leave your career or your work to pursue and like uh, become musicians. But I just want you to kind of dust off the inner rebel you have because the schematics of being well behaved in organizations is the way of the past. And one thing for you, 